Beautiful Kingston, New York, and this is the MTD operation. Welcome to the MTD operation uh, here in Kingston, New York, here with Michael Tobias, base builder extraordinaire, and uh, just did a gig last night in Albany, which Michael came to, which was lots of fun. That's the first time, right? First yeah, time you've... Actually, other than a clinic. It's yeah. a good gig. That's, oh, thanks. Good. Very fun. Um, so anyway, uh, this is where all the MTD American stuff happens, right? This is the shop in all of its mess. Actually, you can see the floor right now, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, usually it's covered with dust, and everything in here is covered with dust anyway, even when it's clean, as you can see. Them. But that's cool, because there's other operations that there's no... Dust at all. There's yeah. no dust at all, which is a bad sign when you're looking at a handmade instrument. Yeah. So this is an actual carpentry shop, but anyway, so what's, you were just telling me about some um, of this stuff. This is the tooling stuff to make fingerboards with, um, on top, body shapes, um, other body shapes and neck shapes, <coughs> neck shapes, these are all the things that we do that aren't by hand, there's some that are done completely by hand, and as you can see from the shelves, every inch of space is packed with wood, um, this is next year's supply of maple burl, and next year's supply of redwood burl, and some for the rest of this year, but next year as well. So this stuff is all here aging in the whole yeah. deal? Okay. Yeah, it's dried, but it has to sit for at least a year. And where is most of the, is this from all over the world? Or? Um, let's see, yes. We have the majority of it from the Pacific Northwest, but there's some <coughs> South American and African wood um, this is California. These are fingerboard stashes from various places all over above those. Where's the Wenge? The Wenge is all processed and it's what's left is over here. We might have four or five more pieces, but there's oh, okay. only five or six neck planks left. And that's the stuff right there. Man. That's the stuff. Turned into uh, <laughs> neck billets already. Most of that big stack is Honduran rosewood. Okay. For fingerboards, there's some uh, body blanks milled on the left, but the stuff in back is under and resin. There's some myrtle, flame myrtle for acoustic guitars hidden back there, and a few other oddballs. Awesome. Now, are these uh, the like, yeah, latest ones? These are mid process. That's the base coat. They have to get sanded smooth for the final top coat. And the necks on those are hanging forward. They're about ready to be sprayed as well. Those are pretty. Yeah. So this is uh Those are both walnut. One's walnut on ash, the other's walnut on walnut. And this uh, colorful one here is spalted maple on ash. It's going to be a seven string. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Exactly. So back here you have the... Back here there are things that are waiting to be sanded out for finish. Um, some finished necks, slotted fingerboards, stored in order of species. Uh, there's one uncarved neck that we haven't gotten to yet, and there's a bunch of carved necks on the second shelf with different boards. Now, we were just talking about this, but uh, so you and Chris, I think there was a time that you guys used to pretty much like you spend a day cranking on just bodies or whatever. How's well, that we, still do, we still do that. Um, but I try to space it out so everything gets finished at about the same time. So there's another three days work or work worth of work on this body pile. Later this afternoon or tomorrow, we'll start gluing peghead veneers on that stack of necks. And once the peghead veneers are glued on and everything's joined, then we can wrap for truss rods and do the perimeters on the necks and glue on fingerboards. So over the next two weeks, all of this will be processed to the point where it'll look like a base when you hold it and then it has to be sanded out for finish and then assembled. So there's about maybe five or six complete days for both of us doing nothing but woodwork. And then all of the major dust in the shop will stop for about six weeks while we go through the rest of it. Yeah. Is that like, uh, and you do all your, obviously you do all your painting or your staining and finishing here. Yeah. So, I don't, I'm a player, I'm not a, 
carpentry guy, but I mean, is the the dust the fact that you're doing this in a wood shop? I mean, it, does that become a problem with no the finishes? because the shop has to get cleaned up and blown out and exhausted and filtered. And so you kind of transform it into a paint booth. Yeah, nearby. basically. Okay. And we don't I don't paint till late at night anyway, so it's time for the dust to settle and everything. That's when your creativity is kicking in. Uh, no, that's the only time I can paint because the stuff is so toxic. It's the only time you can close up the shop and walk away from it. Oh wow! Oh yeah. I guess. Well, so. you're spraying poison basically. You know, I mean, you have a mask and you don't breathe it in or you die. But still, it's still yeah. good for you. So smelling the fumes in the morning gives you quite a buzz when you come in. Anyway. <laughs> So this is a uh, so we could turn this into the uh, dangerous job segment too. So what's the most uh, what's the gnarliest piece of equipment in here to work with? The joiner. These here? Oh, Daniel's pointing at this one. No, I like this one. This machine might get along really well. Daniel, do you have is, bad experience this, with this? No, it just it'll it'll turn your fingers into sausage links. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it'll turn anything into sausage links if you're not careful. The problem, but see <clears throat> this one. We'll just cut them off cleanly, depending on the bit. <laughs> that one will slice them off like you're running through a meat slicer. And the warning on there with the fingers is, oh, not, yeah. is not a joke. That's yeah. a serious thing. Not for the faint of heart? No. No, there's nothing in here that won't hurt you, though. If you get your finger caught in the sand, it will shred you. Yeah. This one has already cost me a manicure or two. <laughs> but you still have all your digits, which yeah, is I've actually all, pretty I've got, remarkable. Well, I've got ten and three quarters, so I'm still good. Nine three quarters, ten and three quarters. And then your, uh, so you do your setups over here? Yeah. Yeah. Another noisy Peterson tuner. <laughs> cool. And what's this one here? That is going to a young gentleman in the UK. It's a semi hollow fretless with a piezo. It's Maryland number 36. And what's the? It's Redwood Burl on Alder. The fingerboard is Rose of the Mountain, and that is maple. That's out of the stash of redwood that got sold to Audi. The rest of the log, they make dashboards for A8s out of. Is that right? Yeah, they paid $65,000 for the log. Uh, I got to fall off. The little pieces that were too small. The crumbs? Used, yeah, the crumbs. Wow. And there's, enough that is... for, there's enough for about 20 of those tops. That is stunning. Yeah, so that is amazing. So basically, the deal is that... Uh, as many of you know, I've been uh, just a hardcore MTD enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic player for, uh, well, since 1997. Yeah. And uh, I bought, I actually ordered my 535 sight unseen from Michael um, after, you know, describing what I was after and just uh, Dr. Tobias, you know, Dr. Wood uh, prescribed the types of wood and the combination that would give me the tone I was after. And I think I had a gig somewhere in the area and, and drove up and uh, walked in that door behind you, Daniel. And uh, it was like, uh, he just kind of goes, oh, yeah, you know, it's sitting there on the bench, you know. And uh, that's my 535 number 252, the blue one, bluish green one that everybody, uh, most of you are familiar with. And uh, it was stunning. And it remains stunning. Uh, it's still my main base. I, I I'm using the 535, I'm sorry, I'm using a MTD J5 now for my work with Lincoln Brewster, and it works really well in the rock setting, but uh, that 535 remains just an amazing instrument. Uh, the man knows what he's doing, so definitely, if you get a chance to check out uh, mtdbase.com. Yeah. Thank you. Not to do an infomercial, but uh, right. I'm really, I really, <laughs> I really believe in the stuff that this guy builds, and he's also a great guy, so have a good one. Thank you.